outside of B cell populations, that's kind of where anyone looking at these BTK inhibitors are migrating their focus on now going forward. Um, just essentially that BTK inhibitors have been primarily focused on in B cell cancers and um, more or less depleting the proliferation of B cells. Um, there are um, disease modifying therapies in multiple sclerosis that are anti CD20 B cell focused, essentially just um, focusing solely on targeting B cells and they're, immunocompromising essentially like they do deplete your immune system and that is harmful to individuals with ms because you want to obviously have a, a generally well fun like functioning um, immune system so leaning in towards um, a myeloid lineage we're more or less focusing on monocytes and macrophages um, and uh, microglia which are relevant to the central nervous system which is super important in multiple sclerosis because it's important to not only target cells that are in the peripheral blood, but it, uh, if you are capable of targeting immune cells in the, um, the brain, that's super important because a lot of these um, disease modifying therapies in the past are not actually, actually penetrable to the brain. So primarily the focus as to why we chose to look at tolibrutinib and evobrutinib is that there are studies right now that have shown that they are blood brain barrier penetrable. So that to us was, you know, very intriguing. And we were like, if we can, if we can determine if these um, inhibitors are penetrating through the blood brain barrier, entering the CNS, it's important to look at that in the context of MS, determine their mechanisms of action. That way we can determine if they are actually having an impact on, um, microglia within the central nervous system. I guess initially starting like anybody, it's, it's very important just to hammer down concentrations and time points into which you're going to treat your cells, um, where you're going to start with your cells. Um, I know I had presented a figure in, um, in my method section in my presentation. Essentially, we start with human whole blood um, and we can target the CD14 positive monocytes, use inhibitors on those to determine if there are any pro or anti-inflammatory effects focusing solely on monocytes. But we can also mature those monocytes into macrophages over a series of five days. And once again, treat those with the BTK inhibitors to determine if they are having, um, hopefully in our case, an anti-inflammatory effect on these macrophages. So for us, it was more so where do we start? How do we try and get the most relevant kind of experience and data out um, as efficiently and effectively as possible? Um, so for us, luckily, it's um, a super easy, I guess you could say, to just take the human blood, process it. Um, and then on the other side, it's important that we are now incorporating mouse um, blood and macrophages into our experiments because downstream it is important to um, hopefully incorporate in vivo models outside of just in vitro studies. So right now we're solely focusing on stimulating um, like I showed in my presentation, the human macrophages and monocytes, similar to the mouse macrophages and monocytes. So right now we're seeing um, promising results in the human um, macrophages, which is great. And unfortunately, like that um, graph I had shown with the um, mouse bone marrow derived macrophages, we're not currently seeing a effect with these BTK inhibitors. Um, so it's more my goal now to um, examine exactly why that is the case. And if there are any cell types um, going forward in mice that I can lean into with these inhibitors.